So we're looking at a solubility table. This is going to help encapsulate for us what we need to memorize when we mix salts together and uh, to predict if we're going to get a reaction. How do you know if you're going to get a reaction? You're going to get a precipitate. So we have, if you have something solid appearing in the products, then you know that you have had a reaction. So I've made the table in two, in two tiers, the high solubility and the low solubility salts. High solubility salts uh, like chloride, bromide, and iodides, halogens, most of them are soluble. Sulfides are soluble if they come from, uh, if they're mixed with group one, group two, and ammonium. So for example, lithium sulfide would be, is predicted to be soluble. And the, uh, the criterion for solubility is kind of um, wide ranging. Anything that basically dissolves more than 0.1 mole per liter is considered highly soluble. It's not a very restrictive criterion, but that's what we're going to work with. And anything that is less than 0.1 mole per liter is considered low solubility. And you'll notice that most heavy metal salts are not soluble. Hydroxides, group one hydroxides, ammonium, strontium, barium, and thallium uh, hydroxides are, sol are considered soluble. Most sulfates are considered soluble. Uh, most group one, group one and ammonium salts of carbonate, phosphate, and sulfite are soluble. Most acetates are soluble, and all nitrates are soluble. If you want a soluble salt, a nitrate is the way to go. Now, for low solubility, most silver salts of chloride, bromide, and iodides are insoluble. Lead salts, thallium salts, and mercuric and cuprous salts of chloride, bromides, and iodides are all insoluble. Most sulfides are insoluble with the exception of group one, group two, and ammonium. Most hydroxides, other than the ones listed here, are insoluble. Most heavy metal sulfates are insoluble. For example, lead sulfate is what covers battery plates. If you take your car battery out of the car and leave it in, the garage, in a cold garage for three or four months, you're um, likely to ruin the battery because it'll form a patina of lead sulfate on the plates, and then it'll, it'll form a crystal layer that will be hard for the electrochemical reaction to uh, work after, and the battery won't work properly anymore. Uh, most carbonates, phosphates, and sulfites are insoluble, with the exception of group one and ammonium. Silver acetate is insoluble, and none of the nitrates are insoluble. So with this table, you should be able to predict the outcome of some reactions. Normally when you describe a reaction, you would um, you do it three, one of three different ways. There is a molecular, ionic, and net ionic equation. The molecular equation is where you show everything together. So I said in this question, an aqueous solution of sodium iodide is mixed with an aqueous solution of fundus nitrate. Write the molecular, ionic, and net ionic equation. So here's the molecular, here's the ionic, here's the net ionic. In the molecular, we simply uh, translate what the sentence says. An aqueous solution of sodium iodide, here's sodium iodide, aqueous, is mixed with an aqueous solution of plumbus nitrate. Here's plumbus nitrate, aqueous. This is a double displacement reaction. So when these two things mix, the, uh, the metal from this one goes with the iodide, and the metal from this compound goes with the nitrate. Uh, of course, sodium nitrate is soluble, since all nitrates are soluble, so it's going to stay aqueous. It's not going to form a precipitate. On the other hand, iodides, uh, most iodides of heavy metals, like lead, are insoluble. So we're going to predict that this is going to form a solid. And in fact, it does. You get a yellow precipitate when you do this reaction. So this is the uh, molecular version of the equation. Here's the ionic equation. In the ionic equation, you show each one of the species that um, dissociates in aqueous solution. So we have aqueous sodium, aqueous iodide, aqueous plumbus ion, and the nitrate anion. And on the right side, we show one of the, the product that forms and the other two things that don't combine because they're, they're soluble. And in the final equation, you cross out everything that appears on both sides. So sodium appears on both sides unchanged. Nitrate appears on both sides unchanged. Those are called spectator ions. They're called spectators because they just sit there they don't participate in the reaction. 
So you cross them out and you just recopy the parts that are actually reacting. This is called the net ionic equation. It actually shows you what's happening in the solution. In the second example, we have an, an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide is neutralized by hydrochloric acid. This is a reaction between a strong base and a strong acid. And whenever you have a strong base reacting with a strong acid, you always get water being formed as your net ionic equation. So here I've shown the molecular equation. Here I show all the things dissociated. And then I cross off all these spectator ions to show you the actual reaction that's happening between a strong acid and a strong base. In the next example, we have solid magnesium hydroxide neutralized by hydrosulfuric acid. In this reaction, we have a weak base and a weak acid, so you might be tempted to think, okay, there's no reaction. But in fact, you do get a reaction. You still get water being formed between the weak base, which still provides hydroxide, and the weak acid, which still provides H+. Uh, by the way, you should memorize the strong bases and strong acids. The strong bases um, are hydroxide, and the strong acids are uh, all have hydrogen in there. I just dropped, I forgot one thing here. I didn't put the two it's all here. Uh, it's good to memorize them. Nat curve Kasselbrock gives you the strong bases, so group one, group two metals, and then no so clock will breathe gives you the strong acids. Nitrate, sulfuric, chloric, uh, perchloric, tetrachloric, tetrabromic, tetraiotic acid. If it's not a strong acid, it's a weak acid. If it's not a strong base, it's a weak base. Uh, so we show in, this, in the last example, magnesium hydroxide reacting with hydrosulfuric acid. The products are magnesium sulfide and water. There's the molecular equation. Here I show everything dissociated. And then I crossed off everything that's a spectator. So the net reaction is again, OH minus plus H plus gives you water.